gas. They, they are amorphous solids of silicon and oxygen. So it's good to know. Yeah. All right. One more topic today. Mr. Phase Sims. diagrams. Uh, phase diagrams are pretty cool. I like these. So let's talk about those phase diagrams. These are actually called tertiary phase, di phase diagrams because you have um, several things you're going to look at. It's a chart that shows temperatures and the pressures for a given substance. Okay. Now, there's a term we haven't defined yet. Okay. And that's called sublimation. Yeah. Not that we need to talk about this real fast. Sublimation is when a substance goes from a solid to a gas. Yeah, and it doesn't pass through the liquid phase. It goes directly from a solid to a gas. If you've, if you've ever played with uh, dry ice, you'll notice you have a chunk of solid, and then it just turns into vapor, and it never goes to the liquid phase. That's why it's called dry ice. It's not really ice. It's actually frozen carbon dioxide. But um, it's called dry because it doesn't go through the liquid phase and make things wet. That's correct. And actually, the opposite, gas to solid, is called a deposition. Right. It gets so deposited. Deposited. Okay, here is the classic um, uh, phase diagram. Let's talk about carbon dioxide. This happens to be carbon dioxide. So I want you to kind of understand what's going on in this. On this um, um, axis, on the y-axis, we have the pressure measured in uh, pounds per square inch of carbon dioxide. And so um, the pounds per square inch uh, on the Earth um, I think it's 32 pounds, isn't it? That's, I don't know. I, I, I never really think in pounds per square inch. I think pounds per square inch the, uh, is 32. So right here, if I have solid ice, solid um, carbon dioxide, and then if I were to heat it up, it will travel. This is temperature down here, of course. It's going to um, sublime or sublimate. Go from say. the solid to the vapor. Right. And so, But this is cool is that we have interesting, this is the solid region. Mm -hmm. This is the vapor or the gas region. And this is the liquid region. You can see the borders between them. Right. Now, this is an important thing to draw a picture of, ladies right. and gentlemen. Sketch it. You don't have to have all the blues and the reds and things. Okay, and so this is, um, they call this the vapor region, and then this is the gas region. That's not really that critical. Basically, this stuff is all vapor. Now, we should talk about a very important point we call the triple point. Now, what happens at the triple point? Um, then you have uh, solids, liquids, and gases, all three present at the same time. That's kind of cool. You can have solid cool. and gas at the same time. Now, we'll show you a demo with carbon dioxide yeah. effect where you get to see this is very, very cool. Yep. And there's another point called the critical point. What's the critical point? Um, beyond that point, you can't have liquids, basically. So it's always a gas beyond right. that temperature. Yep. For, for carbon dioxide, that is simply about, it looks like 90 degrees yeah. Celsius. So if you're above 90 degrees Celsius, carbon dioxide cannot be anything but a gas. Yeah. All right, and then you can see a liquid. So now, this liquid vapor boundary, when you cross this boundary, what mm -hmm. happens, Mr. Sanders? Um, then you're going to go from a liquid to a gas, so it's boiling. That's boiling, and if you go across this way, it'll condense. Condensing. And so when you cross this line, Mr. Sims, uh -huh. that would be... Solid to liquid is uh, melting. And going across this way... It's freezing. Freezing. And we didn't draw this line, so this is sublimating, and this is... Deposition. Deposition. Right. All right, pretty cool. Yeah. All right. Now here's the little phrase dry again, a vater. Now this one's a little different, Mr. Sams. Yeah. Something is a little different. What's the difference, Mr. Sams, on this one? Um. There's one line that's different. I'm looking for it. It is this line right Show here. Me. Oh yeah, that one goes kind of to the left. You know, on the on the vapor pressure diagram of carbon dioxide, this line right yeah, here one. was had a positive slope. Yeah, it did. This one here has a negative slope. Mm. So water is different. This actually explains why water is, or ice, is less dense than water, and why ice floats on water. Because its phase diagram is one of the only ones. I, I think there might be a couple other ones. I don't know exactly what they are. I've never heard of another one, but no. that has a negative slope for this line. Yeah, water's weird. Yeah, water's a strange thing. But substance. it's a good thing. This good is actually a good picture. Life. You can see the vaporization, condensation. We saw that with the callouts in the last picture, sublimation and deposition there mm -hmm. as well. So that's pretty cool. So you can see that. Now that leads to something very intriguing. Actually, here's uh, another picture of it. Yeah. Um, you know, I, we should just back up. When we have one atmosphere, which is you know roughly where most people live, you know here in the park or maybe here. But if you were to heat up water, as I added temperature from a solid, solid to, a, to liquid, a liquid to a gas, to a it gas. would boil. Yep. Now I could boil the water by just having it drop down that way, couldn't Right, it? so you could reduce the pressure instead of increasing the temperature. That's correct. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. All right. Now this is actually a cool picture. Now. So um, if you watch the Olympics or in the figure skating, something interesting happens right here as, as the ladies' uh, skate hits the ice. What happens to the ice? Uh, well, I... Let's is think there, about is it. Is there another picture? Okay, yeah, let's think about it. Okay, so all of her weight, let's say, they're usually pretty small. Let's say she weighs 100, 100 pounds. pounds. 100 right. pounds. 100 pounds pushing down on that, Actually, on that tiny, tiny, tiny little bit of her skate. That means all of her weight is being focused on that one How about one like... Point. Per like maybe half an inch. Yeah, probably half an inch square. square. It's a very tiny area, so that would be uh -huh. like I could do the math. You would actually divide that. You'd say there'd be 200 pounds 
per square inch. Per square inch. Okay, that's a lot of pressure being pushed down on that ice. So we have a, a high pressure on that small area. So actually, if you go back to the phase diagram, uh -huh. so ice is, of course, a solid. Right. And if we say we're right here and uh -huh. we increase the pressure, the pressure. Hey, look, it goes into the it liquid It turns phase. into this say to it becomes a liquid. So interestingly yep. enough, people think she's skating on ice. No. She's they, they say like on Disney on ice, no, right? No. It's actually Disney on water. water. Because what's happening is, is it creates all these lines. You can see all the lines in the, on the ice. Mm -hmm. They make small pockets of water, liquid water, and then it's easier for them to um, uh, skate on the water, actually. There's ice underneath it. So, so that's pretty cool. All right. Hey, one last thing. I want to do the phase diagram of carbon. Hello, something just pulled up on my computer. The phase diagram of carbon is um, carbon. Remember, we talked about the allotropes of carbon, diamonds and graphites, liquid and uh, vapor. But interestingly enough, there's actually two triple points for um, carbon. The graphite vapor liquid triple point, and there's also the diamond liquid graphite. Um. So how do you make a diamond? This is an interesting thing. To make a diamond, all you simply need to do is take graphite, not simply, it's not so simple as that, and you can increase the pressure. If you increase the pressure, it will turn into a diamond. And so diamonds can be uh, manufactured, not just dug out of the ground, but manufactured. And um, yeah, then you make a diamond by just increasing the pressure to somewhere above 10 to the 9th pascals, which is a very high number, by the way. <laughs> so very, very high pressures. You can turn graphite. So I could like take something that has uh, a graphite in it, like a pencil lead, and if I apply enough pressure, I will turn it into a diamond. And so I'll make a cheap pencil and turn it into an expensive diamond. How cool would that be? That is very cool. Okay, so that ends.